Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb recording Biotoxin 11, Fixing VEGF. VEGF, Vascular Growth Factor, Endothelial Growth Factor. Where does that fit in? Well, there's sort of three layers to biotoxin illness. Layer number one is where you have all of these cytokines setting off your innate lizard immune system and cascading complement. And that makes you feel crummy from all that low-grade inflammation that's going on. Layer number two is where you damage the leptin receptor in your brain. And as a consequence, three critical neurotransmitters or called vasoactive intestinal peptide and antidiuretic hormone and melanocyte stimulating hormone wreak all sorts of havoc because they alter the balance of much of your pituitary hypothalamic control of your body and your immune system. But layer number three is what we're talking about here, and that's VEGF. And VEGF is a hot topic right now because in cancer, you know, cancers have to grow a lot of blood vessels, and they do that by putting out VEGF because cancers need a lot of blood flow because they're really broken uh, cells and need a lot of sugar. So they need a lot of blood flow, so they put out VEGF. If you make an anti-VEGF compound, that's very interesting chemotherapy, and that works quite dramatically well. Well, what happens in biotoxin illness is imagine you have circulating little tiny chemicals circulating throughout your whole body, setting off toll receptors in the lining of your blood vessels. And your blood vessels aren't very smart. They can basically call for help and let out signals there's trouble going on. So, for example, if you have invading bacteria, they can say, it's here, it's here, it's here. And so white cells come and they respond to those cytokines and they come and stick. Well, if a lot of them stick in small blood vessels, what happens to the blood flow through that blood vessel? It drops quite dramatically. And that's the problem with VEGF. Folks with biotoxin illness have capillaries that are blocked. They can't flow. You can measure it. For example, you can send somebody to a pulmonary function test and measure their anaerobic threshold. Where are they getting fatigued and starting to burn lactose? And you will see that somebody with biotoxin illness looks like they're an 85-year-old with congestive heart failure. So here's an exquisitely healthy-looking person who is so fatigued they can't walk up a flight of stairs. And you think they're a little crocky. No, they're damaged. They've got biotoxin illness. And they'll tell you they go out and do something and then they have to spend two days in bed. And again, society says they're hypochondriacal. No, their VEGF is damaged. Oh, that suddenly turns the light on a whole new raft of issues with chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Please be sympathetic to these folks. How do you fix it? Well, actually, it turns out to be relatively simple. Your body is responding to the biotoxin by putting a whole mist or a whole flood of inflammatory cytokines. So change the balance and flood your body with the building blocks for anti-inflammatory cytokines. And that's what fish oil is. DHA and EPA are the building blocks for making anti-inflammatory. And the body's always in balance. If there's a little bit of this, you need a little bit of that. And if you raise the level of anti-inflammatory cytokines, your body's going to make and, and balance out and make less inflammation. Now, what's very interesting is that insulin release damages that and prevents that. And there's this concept in medicine called the common soil hypothesis that says that inflammation and metabolism come from the same roots, and they seem to intersect. So once we set off metabolism by stimulating insulin, then we cause inflammation. And you see many examples of that, but we aren't going in that today. But what we do see is that you don't fix your VEGF if you're eating things that stimulate insulin, which is amylose or amylose-containing foods, the things that release sugar very quickly. So go on a no-amylose diet for a month. Make absolutely certain you're not eating any root vegetables. You're not eating any grains, any grains at all, and no bananas and probably some nuts, like peanuts. You might combine that with some actose. Well, that's what we talked about last week. We're talking about lowering MMP9. But flood your body with at least 2 grams to 3 grams a day of good quality fish oil. 
Now, more controversially, uh, Dr. Shoemaker found that the very tiny low dose of uh, hormone for making you make blood vessels, uh, that actually gets into regulatory trouble and folks have trouble with that. So we won't go into that in detail, but I think that was actually a brilliant find, but it's too delicate to use. What will work for me? Well, I've found many patients in my practice who have high ed VEGF and son of a gun, they get better with just fish oil most of the time. Very intriguing. Hope that works for you too. This is Dr. John Whitcomb on Biotoxin 11, Fixing VEGF.